Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Joe Naz Podcast. Today, we have a close friend of mine, Matthew Cohen, who I am going to have the pleasure of interviewing today. Actually, let's take it back. I'm not interviewing him. We're going to be having a great conversation today Absolutely. about everything ranging from recovery to stem cells, to ways to optimize your health. We're really going to be going all over the gambit and just seeing where this conversation leads. I know Matt's stoked about this conversation. This is his first podcast, Absolutely, and I'm man. really stoked to have him on here. We've been having a lot of great conversations recently, and the way that we got introduced was actually I was looking into doing stem cells myself, mm -hmm. and I ended up choosing his facility over others. And we're going to go over the reasons why when there's so many different places all over the world that you can go get this done. Um, but I ended up going with them for specific medical reasons. And so I was very stoked with the results. I'm about five weeks out now from yeah. the procedure. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about how that has had an effect on my life. And Matt uh, helps to run a group called the Regenerative Wellness Group. Correct. Correct. And he's yeah. been doing this for several years now. So uh, Matt is not a doctor specifically, but he has a lot of research that he's done into different medical products. And through that research, he's been able to self-inform um, himself. Basically, that was a double negative or whatever you want to call that. But so he's been able to basically inform himself about these products and how they're able to help individuals. He works with many doctors. He works with many biohackers. He's involved with many different types of technologies that can help you to stay young, looking pretty, and improving your health. And so I'm excited to have this conversation today. Thanks for being here today, Matt. My pleasure, Joe. I am too. You know, this has been on my goal list for a long time to either be on a podcast or start my own and to have the pleasure to have a conversation with you has been a great, a great gift. And I'm excited with everything you're doing in this podcast and, yeah. uh, you know, let's really help people. Yeah, 100%. I mean, the way we got introduced was at a friend's birthday party. Um, my friend Sophia, uh, she she had a birthday party and Matt actually led a meditation uh, during the birthday party. And so we didn't even get introduced to each other through the medical space or anything in that realm. It was really just kind of a connection and seeing that we resonated on um, kind of a spiritual level. Uh, level in that sense. And we were mm -hmm. able to connect there. So it was cool to connect first as human beings and then to learn about what you do. And that's kind of also why I trusted you a little bit more than other people I might have known in my life because of just the type of person you are. Yeah. You know, the whole story behind how this journey's gone in my life and in your life as well has been really divine in a sense. You know, I, I suffered from some medical conditions and injuries that led me down the biohacking, the health and wellness, the trying to live the best version of myself through these alternative medical products. And it's just been a really fun journey, you know, yeah. and here we are and we get to talk about it. And you're right. I'm not a, a doctor or a nurse, but I've been immersed in the field of biohacking with experts and professionals. I've used a lot of these products myself mm. multiple times. And so I'm just kind of here to tell a story with you and have a conversation about how cool this stuff is and how effective it can be for us to, you know, kind of cheat fair on life. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't even call it cheating. You're, you're putting in more work than cheating, right? It's totally. almost, it's harder than cheating. And what I've seen in my life is a correlation between the healthier that you get, and that includes mental health, physical health, right? It's a combination mm, yeah, and absolutely. spiritual health. So as all three of those correlate and they all get better, then everything in my life seems to get better, right? The money in my life gets better. The relationships in my life get better. Me just m mentally, like every single day, the way that I'm able to act, to connect with others, to respond to others, all of it improves. And for me... I think that journey like really started when I was reading a book called uh, Tony Robbins, Awaken the Giant Within. Yeah. Have you ever read it? I've listened to so much of his stuff over the yeah. years from when I was real young. And uh, it's just, it's it's incredible to adapt some of the concepts that he's put together in, in his teachings. And yeah, I mean, that's that's incredible stuff. Yeah, he, he goes through this exercise in the book where he has you essentially list out all of your values of like what they currently are at that yeah. time, like everything from adventure to growth to being comfortable, having power, right? Like all of these can be different things that you value and you look at what your actual values are. Mm -hmm. And I realized at that moment, um, he explains in the book why he values health as number one. And he showed basically how as your health improves, it literally infects and affects every single aspect of your life. And so if you focus on your health being the most important thing, everything else will benefit. And so, so true. when so you true. take your values and then you have a hierarchy for them, meaning this is the most important one, this is the second most important one, it helps with decision fatigue because then you don't 
have a question. It's like when you're making a decision between should I do the unhealthy thing or the healthy thing? Well, you chose that you're making health your number one value. So you're not going to make a lot of the bad decisions that you'd make before. But for me, for example, like being comfortable was something that I valued higher than being healthy. So in the past, I would choose things that made me feel comfortable, which is feeling full or eating shitty food or, yeah, or going, you know, getting a human. Yeah. Or partying and getting fucked up. Right. Like these were things that made me feel better than feeling feeling healthy did, right? And then once I made that decision to make that switch, right, then like a saying that comes to mind is nothing tastes as good as healthy feels, Mm -hmm. right? And then you start making wiser decisions. And as, as I made that number one, everything in my life started to improve, you know, astronomically and exponentially. And so now that I've improved you know, my health and mental well-being, it starts with like little, little, like the basics, eating healthy, working out. Then now it's getting to the things of stem cells. Now I'm starting peptides this coming week. Yeah. And it's going to next be going into other ways that I can optimize myself. Right. And, And there's just so many little things. And I think as you start going down this journey, you just learn that there's an unlimited amount of ways to improve your health and, and mental well-being. Yeah, you're 100% right. And and what's interesting, too, is there's a dynamic of the industry where, you know, the low-lying fruit on the tree works really well. You know, what kind of water are you drinking? What kind of food are you eating? There's so many different types of, you know, pollutants and preservatives and chemicals in our food and our water and everything. But yeah. really using it as a, like a multifaceted approach to your health there are so many tools now. There's so many tools for us to optimize our health. And you're completely right. You know, I I come in contact now with a lot of people that are suffering from some pretty serious chronic disease. And it's just, there's no way you can live a good, happy, healthy life when you're in that chronic state and you're suffering from some of these health conditions. And, you know, the medical system is is very, there's a dead end with the medical system because they just prescribe, prescribe drugs. Yeah. And we're... During COVID was a huge change for the medical industry because a lot of doctors and nurses left to go perform a better way, you know, where they had more tools that they could use to attack these problems and a holistic approach, you know, peptides, stem cells, and it's blossomed this whole entire industry um, where people can go and, and actually have way more tools and really have success with their health. And of course, when you feel better, and you've like you're experiencing like I've experienced from, you know, five years ago and beyond when I got diagnosed with heart disease um, and changed my life. Like you have, it, life takes on a different approach. You know, you feel great. It's you're better off. You're more effective, and it's just it's a really cool industry now that's blossoming that you're experiencing. Yeah, it's been a beautiful journey. I mean, and like you said, it's it's little things, right? Like even just paying attention to what's in your water. Um, I think there's a website called like ETAPS or something. I forget mm-hmm. what it is, where it tells you what's in your water. And I remember my friend telling me about this and I Googled, and I live in Aliso Viejo. That's like rich white people neighborhood yeah, yeah. in Orange County. Like this is like supposed to be the nicest place in the world. And there was like 14 times the arsenic, 200 times the uranium. Like why is there uranium in my water? Like, yeah. and that's what they're giving. Like, I don't understand. Chloroform, which is like, I think pretty sure the drug that's like in the date rape drug. Like, why is this in my water? You're just going to drink water and black out. And just like, yeah. So basically, you know, I don't want to say anything about empire for lack of a better term, but there probably is some things that the government is doing with our water and food to keep us stupid is a long way of saying it. So we keep being followers. We keep being consumers. We don't think Mm -hmm. for ourselves. And so that was the first step in my journey when I really realized how bad a lot of the food and a lot of the water that we eat and drink on a regular basis. So then I went and researched like the best filtration system, which I got this like three-step filter system. And then I had to go into a Canyon water system, which alkalized it. Yep. And I mean, for all the people out there who say it doesn't do shit, I just got my blood work done. They said, whatever you're doing for your kidneys, you're 99% efficient. So I'm doing something right. And I don't care if it's placebo effect. There's also huge studies showing that if you believe it works and you believe it's going to have an effect on your body, then guess what? It's going to. So figure it out. Yeah. The (laughs) biology of belief, a great book by Bruce Lipton. And that's like a whole nother conversation that we'll probably get into in this that it's probably not good to start right now, but you're completely right. I mean, stem cells are some of the most powerful tools um, obviously, they're high end, they're expensive, they're yeah. a living biologic, but the low lying fruit is super important for everyone, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, what kind of sleep are you getting? What kind of water are you drinking? What are you eating in your food? Because these types of things that I'm learning from all these expert doctors I work with and scientists, 
that are dealing with people that have autoimmune disorders, MS, all these chronic conditions that yeah. in Western medicine, they hit the colder sack and the block in the road and they're just like, here's this drug, here's this drug. And they come to clinics like I work with because they're, they don't have any other answers. And yeah. what it really comes down to is the body's super complicated. This is trillions of cells. We turn over billions of cells a day. And it's just, it's hard for everybody to figure this out because it's so complicated, you know? And yeah, there are some forces working against us, I think, that are trying to keep the industry in check and keep the business model working. But this new industry that's blossoming and all this stuff is amazing. And when you pair those like you have with drinking the good water, getting the good sleep, you know, your mental health, your stress levels yeah. and, and the good food, it's just, you're experiencing, it's incredible how good you could feel. You yeah. Know? I mean, I'm, you know, basics would start with your water, figuring, getting a f f good filtration system, also like a filter for your shower, because if people, if you don't know this, but Absolutely. like, I mean, your pores on your skin, you absorb what you put on there, right? So like, it, it also comes down to like deodorant. If you wouldn't eat your deodorant, I know that sounds weird. You probably <laughs> shouldn't be putting it on your body. And so find a yeah. deodorant that's good for you. But even with your shower and the water that's going in there, right? That should be filtered too. And I've even started like reading the ingredients in like condiments would be like a basic thing. And for me, I just have a pretty basic rule now. If it starts having a name that I can't pronounce properly or it sounds scientific, it probably isn't natural and it probably shouldn't be going in my body. Mm -hmm. And they have organic substitutes for everything. And everyone's like, oh, well, it's so expensive. Well, here's the thing. You pay for it now or you'll pay for it later. You make the choice. Yeah, and it's, it's really damage control. You know, it's with we're being bombarded left and right from yeah. toxins from all areas. And so, you know, just becoming aware, becoming kind of like a Sherlock Holmes investigator into your life. I mean, it might sound crazy to some people, but it really does make a difference. And especially if you have anything that's going on with a chronic disease or autoimmune disorder, you know, that's where a lot of my expert yeah. clients that are the doctors and the scientists that work with this stuff, that's where they start. Yeah. And, you know, another really good book that Rebecca, my partner, that you know, owns Bear Bunny that you have yeah. gotten many treatments at is called Dirty Genes. Yeah. And it's an incredible book that talks about your body on a genetic level and how our genes are constantly be tur being turned on and off. Yeah. And and that um, all these toxins and these different things we're talking about affect our genes and they can kind of send our body into haywire. Yeah. And so really looking at everything on a conscious level from every aspect of our health and starting to f take away the toxins and get the good products and the good food and, and your health will start to improve, you know? So it's amazing. How, how long have you been on this, this journey with your health again? Probably since I started just like waking up and started working on like, you know, childhood stuff and really going down that journey. It probably when I reached a point of severe depression, I want to say like three years ago. Yeah. And I just like realized, you know, the food isn't making me happy. The partying isn't making me happy. My friends aren't making me happy. And I just like started breaking down as an individual. I'm like, okay, I need to start from like square one and just like understanding what's going on with myself. And first it was the mental health was the most important yeah, thing because yeah. that's the most like prevalent thing because mm -hmm. it was controlling every aspect of my life. And then I started going into the physical health aspect of it. And I think that's probably a process that a lot of people take. It's like the mental health is first, then they go down the physical. And then as I started dealing with the big physical things, I then got into the little nuances right now where I'm at now with the stem cells and with the peptides and just wanting to optimize any way I can. And, you know, you, you brought up a, a good point in the fact that this stuff is expensive, but what greater investment are you going to make than into your own health and into yourself, right? And I feel too that the more money I spend on this stuff, the more I believe it works. And so there's also like this like weird threshold thing where it's like, yeah, sure, it costs a lot more, but I also believe in it a lot more. And it probably is having a better effect because I believe in it so much more. If it was cheap, yeah. I wouldn't think that it really worked, right? So that's also another aspect of it too that I've learned in my life. The more I spend on something, the more I actually believe in it. 100%. And that's why I encourage people to start with the low-lying fruit first. You know, like we talked about the water and the food and those things that are less expensive and, you know, but everyone, you're right, we could probably pick apart their finances and find room to get a good blood test. And you can even get that done under your insurance. I mean, some of those blood tests are very limiting with how complicated it all is and the body is. And these integrative doctors are not necessarily on insurance or taking insurance, but it's so important, you know, and, and you mentioned the mental health aspect of it. And it's really interesting how I got involved in this whole entire situation with stem cells. Um, you know, about five years ago, I kind of had a, a, an awakening on my own and some mental health stuff and, and got into recovery. And 
one thing led to another. I hadn't been to the doctor in a long time. And I went to the doctor and I knew some doctors and my dad had a heart attack when I was young and he was 36 years old. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's super young. I was, you know, it was like Thanksgiving and next thing you know, my dad's in the back of the car, you know, curled over, you know, hanging on for dear life. So when I was on my journey of, of mental health recovery and, and all the things, I went and got checked out by a cardiologist because they said, hey, this is hereditary, most likely. So you should go get it, go get checked out. And I did the EKG and the stress test and those normal tests, and they actually all came out okay. Mm. And next was, you know, the doctor said, hey, this isn't covered under your insurance, even though it's hereditary hered hereditary in my family, mm. but you should go get a coronary calcium scan, which is mm. a CT scan of your heart that basically shows when you develop plaque in your arteries to a certain extent, it turns into calcium. So they can see that CT is like an x-ray. And he said, it's either going to come back zero below 50 years old, zero is normal. And if it comes back with anything, we know that you have heart disease and it came back 230. So here I am, you know, kind of scared because my, my dad had open heart surgery where they crack your chest open. I got to watch, you know, multiple surgeries. So obviously it's like I got the Levi's jeans and not the, not the designer jeans, right? And it's like, I don't want to go down this journey. I got to watch my dad go through that. Yeah. And it was not pleasant. So, but I look back on it and the coolest part was, is what better motivator than death, Yeah. right? Or what better motivator than pain and suffering having surgery? So yeah. it was like... You know, I, I quit drinking and, and, and partying a lot, and I just really got into this health stuff. I mean, I had been into it before because I used to party on the weekends and take a green powder during the week. Yeah. You know, like, oh, it's going to offset it. I'm going to be fine, right? Which is, you know, anything yeah. you're going to do is great, and I have nothing against partying and, and do that. Yeah, do as much as you can for your health. But I went down this crazy journey of, you know, listening to podcasts, you know, Dr. Yeah. Rhonda Patrick on Joe Rogan's been on there many Dude, times. She's she wild. She was a huge foundation to my health journey. Her brain is so big. So it's scary. Good. But the cool thing is, is she has <laughs> the ability to, you know, communicate all the science in a level that I could understand. Yeah. So I got on some supplements. I, you know, saw these doctors. I did some deeper blood testing, started reading different books. And, you know, it's turned into stem cells, peptides, yeah. cold plunge, infrared saunas, oh, genetic testing. Her website, actually, a plug for her, you can take your 23andMe and download your raw data file and upload it to her website. At the time, it was like just a donation. I yeah. think it might be 25 bucks now. And it gives you a full printout that explains to you all the different genes you have and how you can supplement and live to you know, live a better life with those genes. Yeah. So I put together this whole supplement routine, started seeing integrative doctors, looking at blood testing, because so many people, including myself back then, are just throwing supplements at themselves. Yeah. Well, it's like, That's are they saying. working? Because 95%, that could be a wrong number, but the, the supplement industry is marketing. Yeah. Right? So, and it's not FDA regulated. Yeah. Not that... Well, that's a whole nother conversation, some right? Some of it is. But not. yeah, some of it is. So, you know, really going down and taking the supplements, looking at the blood work to yeah. see how it's working. Yeah. You know, it's like, and it turns into like this really, um, it's all about the data, you know? And it's, it, to me, coming from a background in private yachts and always working on engines and stuff, the body to me is like the most beautiful machine ever designed. Yeah. And it's very similar with plumbing and, and pumps and an engine inside and, and all these air conditioning and all these regu yeah. regulation systems. And so really going down the path of taking the supplements, seeing how they're working, going to these doctors like you're going to, and it's, it's, it's been really cool. Yeah. And then I had a shoulder injury that was in the, I just was doing a burpee at the gym one day, working out the way I do. I love to work out, love to surf and stay active. And I just felt a little pain, definitely like a tear. And I went through going through that. It, it got better and then was slowly rehabbing it with light weights. And then I was uh, doing some work and I was bending in a weird direction and I heard it pop. Then it happened yeah. again. And I'm the type of person that likes to play hard and I probably should have let it heal a little more and it turned into this chronic injury. Yeah. And so I, uh, a mentor of mine in Utah that uh, is a businessman has been investing in the space 12 to 13 years in stem cells and genomics, he said, hey, come out here. I'm working on a new a new project with a lab that's been around 20 years. And, uh, you know, I went and saw a doctor out there and got um, some stem cell injections in my shoulder. And with two injections, I was back to surfing again. 
and boxing and doing all the things. Nice. So it's it was it's incredible, you know, with some of this stuff and how it works. That's awesome. So yeah, so we just heard a little bit about your journey in regards to how the stem cells were able to help you, how you ended up getting into stem cells. But I did want to talk about a couple of things. You brought up some stuff about Rhonda Patrick and just the supplement thing. I yeah, I'm like low key like supplement weirdo. I used to just be like, oh, Tim Ferriss recommended it. Okay, Tony yeah. Robbins recommended <laughs> yeah. it. Okay, Joe Rogan. I'm just gonna have four billion supplements, spend yeah. like two grand a month, and it's all gonna work. Chewing pills all yeah, night. Yeah, just like, like <laughs> it's just like literally spending most of my day just like drinking through like the protein drink or whatever it is. Yeah, and, yeah. And that's for any of you listening, that's not the way to do it. That is the most incorrect way to do it. And I actually was um my liver was having issues, not issues, but it was just like something in my liver, there was a specific protein or something that was out of whack because I was taking too many supplements. So wow, you can yeah. take too many supplements. And so mm -hmm. you need to be more laser focused, like what we're talking about here, where you go get your blood work done, go talk to a specialist, or you get your hair scan done, which the hair scan, yeah, which Rebecca's, I did through you guys. Yeah, they're bunny. And, yeah. Yeah, and the hair scan told me exactly what was wrong, what I actually was deficient in, what I actually needed, because all of us don't need everything. That's not the right shotgun approach. That is a shotgun approach. You don't need to do that. You should figure out exactly what you need, their specific blood tests. And so I'm, I'm really excited. I have a call later on this week with the guy that I'm going to start the peptides with. We did like 20 different tests. They took like eight tubes of blood from me. Awesome. They're going to literally tell me exactly what I need. We already went over some of my blood work, and then we're going to design a regimen which is specifically designed for my health to optimize myself and to make sure that I'm performing on, on all cylinders. So yeah, for Dr. Rhonda Patrick, or if anybody needs peptides exactly doctors, do, yeah. um, we know a couple different ones. You introduced me to Dr. Berkey. I knew a different guy. Um, yeah, and I just, I just came from her office. She yeah, told me to tell you hello. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so the guy, I ended up going with my guy because you brought up the FDA regulation thing. Mm -hmm. He owns his own company that produces FDA regulated peptides. A lot of other people are struggling, I believe in the industry right now that they're coming down and regulating it. Yeah. The FDA basically just reclassified some of the big peptides, BPC-157, CJC, and the other ones, Ipermorelin and basically, you know, trying to control the industry. And so yeah. it, it's going to prevent some of the compounding pharmacies from being able to sell them in that way. Yeah. So and that's, my, yeah, that's important that he has my, his own sorry, production. Say, my understanding of peptides and, you know, for anybody that's listening, that's a doctor, I'm sorry if I, if I butcher this up, but like when you take supplements, you're trying to trigger certain responses within your body. Mm -hmm. The peptides are essentially cheat codes that just trigger the response. And so instead of having taken a bunch of supplements, you literally inject the peptide, which is an amino acid, and the amino acid They're then- the, Yeah, building blocks to proteins, yeah. Yeah, and so it literally triggers the response that you're looking for. So if you can afford peptides, uh, they're a little bit more expensive than supplements, mm -hmm. you should look into getting them done because they're significantly better, they're healthier for you, it's less work on your body, and it's gonna do exactly what you're looking to do. So it's something that you should look into, so yeah. Absolutely, and and it's it's kind of like the tiered approach. You know, you the basic stuff we talked about, you try and get as much health improvement or quality of life or feeling good out of the basic stuff. Your water and food. Your water and food. And, and working even, out. Even supplements and working out. Yeah. And uh, herbs and, and all those things. Bone broth is amazing, right? And then you can start to move into these other areas, you know, instead of jumping ahead. You know, I see a lot yeah. of people that are just jumping into peptides, you know, when yeah. it's like, what? Look at, look at the basis of your health first. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, but yeah, I mean the pepto, I've used BP one five seven a lot paired with the stem cell. Um, and it works really, really well. You know yeah. what I mean? And, um, taking that whole look and that's where I really learned it was from Rhonda Patrick when she was on Joe Rogan Yeah, I've been listening to Joe Rogan forever. And, and she, I think she's been on there like seven, eight, nine, ten yeah, times I've watched now. two or three. Of and I found a website actually, it's called fast life hacks that kind of tracks all of her podcasts and they've put together a list of the supplements that she's talked about. And Rhonda Patrick's a scientist and I don't really believe is really selling anything. No. So, you know, that's kind of a nut. What I really look for in, in these, you know, public podcasters, even scientists, and, you know, how do they go about providing information? You know, to me, yeah. she seems like a really genuine person she's not really selling it like the commercial doesn't come on right after her podcast no. for that supplement she's super and i nerdy. think that's important because yeah. you know i'm in sales right mm -hmm. and it, that's the whole world so you, 
they're, everybody's always trying to sell you something. You know what I mean? It's like Athletic Greens had a $2 million marketing campaign when they first came out, right? Yeah. And Joe Rogan's pushing them, you know, and not a, not a bad product, but, yeah. you know, it's just, that's that's a phenomenon that's in this industry. No, know? I mean, for sure. But you also can do the research on it too, because I also was unsure and I felt the same way about the Athletic Greens. I'm like, is this legit or bullshit? And I started going down a rabbit hole of like uh, YouTube videos and people have tested it. They've looked at all the products. It's mm-hmm. actually absolutely legit. Yeah. And it's a really good product. And a lot of top doctors will recommend it. So it's like, it's up to you to do the research to see if you trust that person, right? But there's going to be certain people that you trust over others. Like, you know, Andrew Huberman, I really trust him a lot. Yeah, he's a and great he guy. Yeah. also promotes Athletic Greens. I'm like, this guy's not going to do it for the money. He doesn't care. He's literally only going to do it because it's legit. So somebody like that also can have an effect. Yeah, on yeah. And Andrew Huberman, you know, yeah, you can tell that that guy's a pretty genuine guy and he really wants to help people, you know? Yeah. And, Athletics Greens is a good product, but I mean, there's one that I've used for a long, long time called ORAC Greens, O-R-A-C Greens, mm. and it's half price. And it yeah. has just as much stuff. It's all organic. And yeah. so there's just, there's a lot out there, you know, yeah. and um, and that's where, you know, you really do a little bit of research, goes a long way and, you know, put your, that's the biggest thing is put your health in your own hands. Yeah. You know, it's like really value your health and, and you'll make a big difference in your life. Yeah. You know, that that's that's I think number one. Yeah. Because so many people are just relying on, you know, big pharma and medicine to and just leave and trust the science, right? Which is yeah. the most absurd thing I've ever heard. Yeah. When science is all about not trusting and looking at the data and trying to find the inconsistencies or the consistencies over a repeated period of time. And so yeah, th- what what we're doing is is the way to go as far as, you know, really trying to improve your health on your own and then using the experts and the expert advice and the supplements to do it as well. Yeah, know? I agree so. with you. And so uh, before we took a little break here, you were talking about how you ended up getting on your stem cell journey. You basically had gotten the shots. You had chosen this facility. Why did you end up choosing this facility and what is different about these stem cells versus other stem cells? I kind of want to talk about that and explain to people also why I chose these stem cells. Yeah, you know, it's it's a really crazy story. It's a really divine story. And, um, I had this best friend named Tressa and she's, she passed away of lung cancer three years ago. And, um, yeah, she was my best friend. And right before she passed away about the last year, she was dating this guy, Lance from Utah. And, um, you know, I went to dinner with him and her and my girlfriend at the time up here in Orange County. And, told him about the journey that I was on and, and all different areas, spirituality, recovery. And, and, uh, he sent me a book and he just started to reach out and we developed this cool relationship. And he actually created this charity, um, called Genshai. It's a, a secret word that means never treat another in a manner that would make them feel small, including yourself. Um, all about self-love and service to the world, and he's just a great guy. And I, I just kept, you know, building a relationship with him. He's older than myself. He's been an entrepreneur, involved in a lot of businesses. Really great guy. And I started working with him on that charity pro- project. Um, you know, doing some workshops and and mm. spoke on one of his calls. And like I said, I had that shoulder injury that I went down the road of having a shoulder injury, where you know, try and heal it on your own, massage, infrared, heating pads. Yeah. And then um, I had a concierge doctor that was the doctor for the U.S. Olympic hockey team, so he knew his stuff with yeah. orthopedics. And I just got to the point where he basically said six weeks of not using it, wear a brace a little bit, but still move it a little bit, and we're going to see. And if not, yeah. you're going to have to have surgery, basically. Yeah. So I, you know, it's funny, dude. I went through a similar journey too because I, I had an external rotator cuff tear. Yeah, we talked about and it. And I had a labrum tear and I'd done everything. I'd done PT, I'd done physical therapy, I'd done, I even did PRP injections and I'd done everything and it just wasn't healing. It's just sometimes your injuries just get to a certain point and that's it. And there's not much that you can do from that point. Yeah. You know, we're limited, right? We lose our stem cells from when we're a newborn uh, so fast and they get old. And that's one of the main parts of aging. So, you know, I'd been talking to Lance for a while. He lives in Utah. He's got a teepee in the mountains. He he hikes mountains and does a lot of things that I do. And I was like, hey, I'm going to come visit you. And he said, how are you doing? And I said, um, you know, I'm doing great, but I've got this shoulder injury and it's driving me nuts. You know, working out and being active is a huge thing that I do for my mental health. And uh, he said, okay, well, you know, I, you know, I've been investing in, in a lot of businesses while I've been in the gene- genomics and stem cell space 
for about 13 years and I'm working on a new project. And, um, and next thing you know, I was out in Utah meeting with the lab, meeting with some doctors out there, and he was letting me tail him, kind of mentoring me. And um, I went to one of the doctors and they helped me out with a, a stem cell injection, a very small amount, just in the muscle. You know, a lot of stem cell injections go interarticular into the joint. And uh, this is a cellular matrix product that's a little different than a lot of the products out there. And so I went up into the mountains afterwards. I was super grateful. And then I, I came home and it started feeling a little bit better in about three and a half weeks. I was like, wow, my shoulder significantly feels better. And I st got down and started doing push-ups. And it still hurt a little bit, but I was able to do 20 push-ups, which I hadn't been able to put weight on it. And it was insane. And so I, I was called them, kept in touch with them, let them know about this progress. And I called my friend Rebecca that owns Bear Bunny that, yeah. you've, that you've been to, right? And I've Rebecca, Tressa, my best friend that passed away, worked at Bear Bunny and was Rebecca's best friend. Yeah. And Rebecca is such a beautiful soul and super successful. She has the Bear Bunny's the number one med spa in Orange County. And she works with aesthetics in the skin, but not only that, you know, her her motto is fight for, fight for natural beauty, but she does a lot of work with your overall health because your overall health really dictates your skin. Yeah. So instead of just injecting Botox and, and doing surface level work, she's been very um, scientific with, you know, getting healthy with the whole body. So I called her up and I I, call, I was like, Rebecca, I got, I got freaking stem cells. Remember Lance? And next thing you know, she came out to Utah with me and we all met together um, because She'd been looking into stem cells for 10 years, going to trainings, you know, working with other companies. And, um, you know, there we started to relaunch this product um, back at, at Bear Bunny. And, you know, she's done like 67 treatments there. You've been in there. And so it's this really crazy divine, you know, like Lance dated Tressa. Tressa, Rebecca and her husband took Tressa in when she had to move out of her place, when she had stage four lung cancer, yeah. the last year of her life, you know what I mean? And so now uh, Rebecca and Lance and myself are working on this new business together. And, you know, we're just trying to help a lot of people. Yeah. You know, we're trying to provide solutions to, you know, people's injuries and, and to med spas and doctors. And it's just, uh, I didn't, I didn't really necessarily have a choice in this, but it totally aligns with all my goals of my health journey and my heart disease and, and all the different things. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Nice, Super dude. cool. Yeah, yeah. Divine timing, divine placement, and just connecting you through your group of friends. And yeah, even when I went to bear bunny, I realized like I ended up knowing like a bunch of you through one degree of separation too, because I, I met Tressa before I was not super close to her. And so we were in like mm -hmm. the same group of friends, but not. And then even you knew all the fortune guys down in San Diego. And so that was also like one degree of separation there. But I mean, the more I live my life, the more I realize a lot of people are closer than we think. And yeah. we're, we're like literally right next to each other, but not actually hanging out with each other. And so mm -hmm. um, through that journey, it's been cool to see that like minded individuals are all on the same page. Yeah. It's like that energy flows where it needs to flow. And yeah. it threw us, right? And and here we are on this podcast of yours and, and you're doing this podcast to have c conversations and meet incredible people that are making an impact in the world. And it's yeah. like, that's all of our mission. You yeah. know what I mean? Like my mission is to help as many people as possible, millions of people, you know, a, a achieve sobriety. And I don't mean yeah. that not drinking or using, I, I mean that like purity of heart, like yeah. living the best version of their selves um, you know, being able to, you know, perform at a high level so they can make a difference as well too. So yeah, yeah, of course, I don't know what God is doing or not doing, but it sure is, you know, Something's synchronistic that we're here, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's incredible. And yeah. it's been a, it's been a really cool industry to, to work in. And I've done, you know, many stem cell treatments now yeah. and, um, it's completely changed my life, Yeah, you know, and, um, you know, the, the product that we're working with and we, we actually distribute many different products to 
um, regenerative medicine centers, yeah. doctors, uh, med spas, IV centers, yeah. also, also other solutions, business solutions to them as well. Yeah. But um, the product that we're working with is a United States yeah. based product. Yeah. That comes. So, yeah. So let's 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 take people step by step. So we're going to start with a question here. Cool. So why would you work with um, regenerative wellness group over other places for getting the stem cells? I'm going to take you through the process that I went through when it came to deciding this. So first of all, let's start with the product itself, right? So mm -hmm. why are your stem cells different other stem cells and where do they come from? Perfect. That's a great question. So in the stem cell uh, industry, you have you have what's going on overseas, you know, the Cellular Performance Institute in Tijuana, Panama, Neil Rorden, you know, the Cayman Islands, Bioaccelerator down in Columbia. And what they're doing down there is they're isolating mesenchymal stem cells from birth tissue. So like the umbilical cord, the placenta, mostly the umbilical cord or the umbilical cord blood. And then they're taking those cells and they're expanding those cells in a lab. Got it. Meaning like multiplying is another meaning term like that they talk about. They add growth factor. They add, I'm not a uh, scientist or a chemist, but, you know, they, they basically, you know, multiply them or expand them or clone them, right? And obviously it's working. There's tons of success stories. Neil Roden that has the Panama Clinic that Tony Robbins went to with his shoulder. I've read his book so many times to get up to speed and learn about the science in this. So, you know, God bless all them. And But what happens when you clone something is it changes, right? And it ends up changing to where cells might not necessarily be 100% and eventually can turn into fibroblasts. Okay. And so what they do is they to just... Fibroblasts? Fibroblasts. Fibroblasts. Right? What's that? Uh, a fibroblast is just a, a, an, an extension or a, a replica of a cell that turns from a cell into a fibroblast. Okay. So basically... The reason why they're doing that is that they can generate a lot of cells and put them in the body. Yep. And not only that, but that's not legal in the U.S. either. You're not allowed to manipulate a human cell and tissue product and use it for treatment. Got it. So, so you can't clone them here, and that's why people go out of the country, because you can get a lot more for cheaper because they clone them. But what my research and your research has shown is that when you clone them, not all of them stay true stem cells, and they're not as effective as um, pure stem cells. Uh, yes. Yes, I mean they're like again they're doing good work and and I'm not a PhD in this in this industry or this this topic but um, they they clone them because it's very difficult you know from start to finish of producing a product like this you're taking birth tissue that's living tissue that would come from a C-section and as soon as you pull that tissue out of the body uh, cells will die and when cells die they signal to other cells. To die and it's it's apoptosis is rapid cell death and so when you're our scientists that we work with in the lab we worked with figured okay if these cells in a stem cell from the egg and the sperm conception differentiating and multiplying is what creates a human life right so he figured out if these have already done that job and built a child in the womb in nine months they're pretty miraculous, right? Yeah. So why change them? But it's very difficult to prevent that apoptosis. Mm. So what he's done is keeping all the different types of tissues together. So you have multiple different types of stem cells. You have umbilical cord tissue stem cells, Wharton's jelly stem cells. You have umbilical cord blood stem cells, placental stem cells, and amniotic stem cells. And when you keep those together, as well as the exosomes and the growth factor that are all contained in the perinated tissue, it helps keep the cells happy and alive. Mm. And w what they're doing is they're, you know, processing the tissue to extract those cells and they're cryopreserving them, freezing them down to liquid nitrogen, just like they would do a woman's eggs to prepare for a birth later on in life. Okay. Um, that, that process of keeping the natural microenvironment um, helps the ce cells stay happy and healthy. And then when you thaw them out to put them in the patient, they wake up and they have all this good nutrients around and to keep them happy and healthy. So the cells that are going in are still alive yeah. and not only alive, but functioning at a high level. You know, this product has like a 70% living cell ratio, which is, which is very good. Our scientists over the years has tested many different products that some of them not even living. Yeah. It's still have exosomes and they can work great. Or there's a 3% or a 5% yeah. Lance, you know, my mentor and one of the founders of our company, you know, he was the company he was with before that did 100 million in sales. That was a, a really successful company. Um, theirs was like three to five percent living, and it still worked great. 
three to five, three to five percent living Maybe cell, seventy percent, right? That's quite significant. So the other reason why um, I've stuck with this company and have gone with this company is that where the donor tissue yeah, comes where, from. Where are you getting the stem cells right? from? I think that's the next question here. Yeah, yeah, and anyone you know, anyone out there that's wanting to get stem cell treatments, I am a huge believer in all these companies that are doing it right and safe and sound. Um, but do your research. Where does it come from? What is it tested for? Because when you're taking a human cell and tissue product from uh, a, a mother's birth tissue and transferring it into ourselves, which is it's basically a tissue transplant. Yeah. You know, you have to test to prevent graft versus host disease. You know, they test for herpes and AIDS and Epstein Barr and all the different viruses. So our lab that we work with, the, with our main flagship product that you received, um, they pride themselves in their 100% chain of custody with gathering the donor tissue and processing the donor tissue. Mm. So you know, in Utah, you have a, a unique environment of young Mormon women having babies, and they live a very healthy and clean lifestyle, and no tattoos, no vaping, no vaccines, you know, and they our lab also tests for the infectious disease above and beyond the FDA regulations, and they also do a bacterial and fungal contamination testing and quarantine period. So if it comes back positive, they will pull those lots. They're all tracked. Got it. Right. And all the mothers, um, genetic testing, family history, social questionnaires, uh, blood testing, and they have C-section births only. They're all under 25. And the lab is literally 10 to 20 minutes away from these hospitals. And they have special relationships. Labs have been around 20 years. They've been making this type of product for 10 years. And so they're right there when the C-section occurs. They get the tissue, they bring it back immediately, and they start processing it. Got it. And there are other companies that show this testing, but you know, some of the other ones I don't see that. And it's very important to be transparent. And I think why you went with our product is because we were able to communicate that this yeah. is you're starting with the best of the best. And this is kind of a funny analogy that I use because I love to cook. And it's like if I had fresh fish out of the ocean that I just caught and cooked it for you tonight, it's going to taste a whole lot different than if I went to Trader Joe's and grabbed some frozen swordfish that's been in the freezer for 20 days. Yeah. Right? So with living tissue, it's super important, whether you're making exosomes or any of these things, the quality of the tissue that you have. So that's 100%. kind of a breakdown. And, and also, again, it's a cellular matrix and not most of the companies in the U.S., which the only thing that's allowed in the U.S. is a minimally manipulated human cell and tissue oligraft. That's what it is classified as. Uh, meaning that we can't make any claims because it's not FDA approved. In order to make a claim that it does anything, cures, treats, prevents any disease, you have to have FDA approval. Otherwise, a human cell and tissue oligraft is like a tissue transplant mm -hmm. that people are doing you know, with their own education and, and risk, per se. Yeah. And so our, most companies out there are just isolating cord blood or umbilical cord tissue, and they're you're just getting one type of stem cell. Got it. So you're explaining the difference between your stem cells and other companies right now. Yes. Yeah. And there's other cellular matrix products that might use placenta and amniotic cells. Um, but, you know, from my research and, and reading a lot of these books and listening to the PhDs, Wharton's jelly and umbilical cord tissue is really good for soft tissue repair. You know, the umbilical cord blood is really good for blood diseases, mm. right? Um, the placental cells are really good for immune disorders. Yeah. And then, you know, the amniotic has hemopo hemopoto hemotopoietic cells and also um, mesenchymal stem cells as well. Mm. So our product is taking all the different stem cells and exosomes. Exosomes mm -hmm. are basically signals that stem cells excrete, sometimes waste, sometimes growth factor, and they isolate the growth factors from those to use for treatment as well. Okay. And then another thing in the industry that's popular, like you said, is the PRP, right? Where yeah. they spin your own blood. They take the platelet-rich plasma out of the blood and re-inject it in a concentrated form to, yeah. to help you heal. Mm. And so our product also has the perinatal PRP in it as well, as long as hyaluronic acid and TIP2 proteins. We use a glycerol as a cryopreservant, and glycerol is a bioidentical compound. Yeah. So our product has nothing that isn't already in your body. Yeah. So it's very, because it's not expanded or manipulated, it's very um, user-friendly to the yeah. body. And stem cells are unique because they're naive and they don't express an immune response. 
Like if we took your liver and put it in myself for a tissue, or a liver transplant, they would have to give me a lot of immunosuppressant drugs okay. to prevent that reaction. But stem cells, the mesenchymal stem cells, are um, they, they're naive, so they don't express that response. So they're a universal donor tissue, that's and that's right. what makes them so incredible. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, it's super yeah. fascinating. Otherwise, what they do is they take this tissue, they put it yeah. in medical waste, and it's burned. Why would they do that? Because, you know, Maybe they just haven't figured out the way to do it the way that you guys have. Well, that's a really deep conversation because, yeah. you know, if you really do your research and again, I, I encourage everyone that's listening to this podcast to go do your own research. Cause again, I'm not a doctor or a scientist and I could be making mistakes here and there. But if you read Neil Roden's book, or if you listen to some good podcasts, there's one with Dr. Robert Harari on the model health show that, um, wrote the book with Tony Robbins tribes from thousands of years ago were eating the placenta, were using the placenta, using the umbilical cord. And, you know, they've been studying stem cells. I think some of the first actual human applications were in the 90s. And there's tons and tons of clinical studies. And it is kind of fascinating that this hasn't been adapted into medicine. There are, there have been places, like I said, selling stem cells that are not living for, to people for a lot of money and the FDA doesn't like that and people don't like that. There was a place in San Diego that Tony Robbins talks about in his book that were mixing smallpox vaccine with stem cell and injecting. There's providers that can, you know, do it the wrong way and inject into an infection and the, there's been problems. So the FDA and these regulatory agencies do have a responsibility and they do regulate things to keep us safe. Yeah, but there, it is kind of interesting that they've held back on this it also costs, from what I've heard, three to five hundred million dollars to get an FDA product approved, and ten to fifteen years of testing. Not with the COVID vaccine, but yeah. you know that's that's a yeah. That's I'm a not big sure investment. if it costs that much. That's something we'd have to double check on for yeah. sure. Yeah, but I mean something maybe of this caliber. And I mean also, I think it just comes down to the feeling that I get in my gut is that the government and pharma want us to stay sick. They don't want us to to get healthy. They don't want us to feel better. And if we feel better, we stop taking drugs. We stop taking our daily antidepressants, antipsychotics. We stop, you know, doing the things that are necessary, right? If your shoulder heals, well, guess what? I don't need to go to the doctor anymore and get treated. I don't need my yeah. painkillers. And so there's probably a, a many, many things that are trickling down the reasoning as to why they don't want us to have the best medicine, which would be peptides and, and stem cells. And they don't want people to have access to it because it doesn't make sense financially. Just like when they make products that need to be replaced every 30 days. They could easily make a product that could probably last a year, but you don't make as much money if somebody replaces it every year and they replace 100%. it every 12, every, you know, every 30 days. So there's probably a million reasons and most of it really comes down to money. And, you know, this is why, like, I really like guys like Robert F. Kennedy, this guy that's running for president now. He just kind of, like, exposes a lot of this stuff and he shares a lot of this information exposing why they want us to stay sick forever and what Big Pharma actually does to us. So, I mean, yeah, the reasoning is is something that's not our business. We don't have any control over that. Yeah, It's just up true. to you to control your own health and to figure out what's going to work best with you. And and sometimes it requires you feeling into your intuition and understanding that you can heal yourself probably better than most doctors can because the doctors are trained to give a medication, keep you perpetually in that cycle. Yeah, you're right. You know, it's like when I got diagnosed with the heart disease, um, you know, my, <coughs> my cardiologist at the time, you know, he's like, here's a statin and here's baby aspirin. Yeah, and that doesn't solve the problem. Good luck. Yeah, it's just like it's like a they want to give you the shortcut, which is sure, yeah, this will keep your levels low and maybe keep you alive, but why not have the real conversation that you're partying too much, you're eating too much shit, you need to go to the gym five times a week, yeah. you need to get your mental health in order, and you need to fix your your lifestyle, right? That's not mm -hmm. a a doctor can't prescribe that solution. And Absolutely. and most people don't want to hear it and it's really not going to do anything. So they're also limited in the sense of the people that are actually going to listen to them. So, you know, I'm sure that they have to balance that into into everything. But of course, the, the right approach is the holistic lifestyle approach, which you start from ground up. Yeah, and that's a really, you're, you make a good point where humans are are very stubborn. You know what I mean? It's They like, can be very stubborn. Yeah, when, better when language. I... 100%. When I started this journey five years ago, I was like 255 pounds. And, you know, it, it took a lot to change that lifestyle. I still deal with it every day, right? Yeah. We, we give it our best shot and try and stay consistent and disciplined. And there's so many temptations out there. But yeah, I mean, the doctor was just, here's a statin and a baby aspirin. And I started reading and, and about cholesterol and the different things. And I don't take that medicine anymore. 
even though most doctors would say that's not a good idea because you have heart disease. Yeah. But what I realized, you know, from people like Rhonda Patrick and uh, there's a book called The Cholesterol Myth um, and some studies and also looking at some of the studies on statins um, and from some scientists that talk about how those studies can be misleading. Yeah. And um, cholesterol is really important. I've went down the, the same road you're going down in the beginning of this year. I ran into an incredible doctor down in San Diego, Dr. Melinda Silva, who's mm-hmm. now my doctor, integrative doctor like you're seeing. And I went to do my, you know, I get a couple blood tests a year, sometimes more. And I wanted to get into hormones and peptides. Because, yeah. you know, I, I listen to all these podcasts like we're on right now. And yeah. that's what everybody's talking about, Joe Rogan and yeah. Ways to Well, you know, it's incredible stuff. So I went and saw her and she did the blood testing and my testosterone was really low. Yeah. And she said, well, they're giving you a, a drug to lower your cholesterol. Yeah. Well, your cholesterol, she pulled up this big chart. Your cholesterol makes all your hormones. Yeah. So if we're lowering your cholesterol with a drug and it makes all your hormones, your body's going to react to that and try and make more cholesterol. I didn't even think about that. Right? And I didn't know that either. I've been, yeah. to, mo- I've been to multiple integrative cardiologists, um, and they've never checked my hormones. Yeah. So what she said is she's like, yeah. I'm going to give you some bioidentical testosterone and we're going to watch your estrogen because that's low too. Yeah. And watch if we start to raise your testosterone to where it was and some other supplements too, you try and do it natural first, yeah. your cholesterol will come down. Yeah. You know? And so it's, the body is, is very complex. Yeah. So we and all we, have to, and that's what these new doctors like Melinda Silva and Dr. Berkey and even Rebecca, yeah. they're, they're looking at the whole entire puzzle. Yeah, you Instead have to. of just the foot from the foot doctor or the, you know, respiratory doctor or the cardiologist. Yeah. And and so, you know, that was fascinating. And where you start to get all this stuff leveled out, and you know, now it's it's been going well. Like my last scan yeah. was really, really good and the heart disease has reversed. Yeah, I mean, crazy. E- even when you say like that, right? I remember listening to Paul Check. Do you know who Paul Check is? Yeah. Yeah, so I was yeah, listening to Paul Check, and he was talking about how he was able to discover where people were having, like, injury issues, that it actually was stemming from an organ because mm-hmm. maybe they had a shor- shoulder problem, and it runs along a specific oriental meridian, and that meridian will correlate to an organ, and that once you fix the problem with the organ, then the shoulder pain might go away. And so it's just understanding that everything in your body is interconnected, Mm -hmm. And like, this is also like an approach that I take with all my clients. We don't just send you to a chiropractor and, you know, a guy that gives you pills for healing. I make sure that every one of my clients has an option of doing acupuncture, gua sha, Eastern modalities that they can check out with that because it sometimes is something that maybe it's, you know, maybe it's a a mental issue. Maybe it is a physical issue. Maybe it's an energetic issue, right? It's like, it's sometimes not as simple as you take a pill and that's a solution. And so um, I think taking a holistic approach to your health and understanding how your body works is something that it's not a, you should, it's, you have to. Um, and, and it's a step-by-step process. And I mean, this is only, you know, you understand all this stuff because you've been super deep in this and I've been going super deep in this myself and I've had to dedicate so much time to listen to so many podcasts and listen to people. And, and it's not, in my opinion, going to your primary care physician. I do not think that's where the information is. I think that's probably the last place you should go in my opinion. Um, and you should do some research on your own, read books you know, research some of the best teachers out there. They have free podcasts where you can learn all this stuff and and just see who resonates and and talks about things that you might be suffering from. Yeah, and 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 you know, I want to give credit to all the doctors. You know, they're trying their best and, and yeah. doing a great job. You know, they they get stuck in a model. You know, and um, but yeah, I mean that's 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 so key that when you when you take yourself your health in your own hands yeah. and and you really look at the whole picture and, and use these different modalities. I mean, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And I'm not saying that doctors are not good and they're not going to help you heal because I mean, I got my PRP injection in my doctors. I go to a chiropractor every single month. Yeah. I trust doctors wholeheartedly, but I think that it's important to look at your health in a big picture. And I think that you need to take that first look and take a step back and figure out where you need to start and then go from there. 
Yeah. And, and the fact that you're integrating that as a lawyer into your practice with personal injury clients, like how cool is that? Yeah. Like how much of a conscious approach is that helping your clients? And, yeah. But I think that's you know, only because I've been in five car accidents myself and I realize that the standard stuff that they give you and they tell you to do, you're not a cook. You're not the same human as everybody else. It's not a cookie cutter approach to healing. Everybody's body is different and your injuries that you suffer are completely different. Totally. And so you have to figure out what's the best approach for those specific injuries. So it's only because I've gotten all the treatments and I'm like, no, this worked, this didn't work, that works better. This, And, and so I kind of give all the options and let people try to see what's going to provide them with the most healing. And sometimes it's not even that the modality itself is healing you, but it's mm -hmm. that doctor is a good person and they're literally energetically making you feel better and they're improving your mental health. And it's sometimes just being around that human being that's literally improving you. Yeah, there's the placebo effect is so real, the yeah. energetic side to all this, which will, that's a whole nother part of this conversation. But it's it's so true you yeah. know what i mean and and to to provide solutions to your clients with all those different modalities I, i've done so many things you know sound healing and breath work yeah. and reiki and cold plunge and sauna and yeah. just really focusing on mental health and i've been around a lot of um really serious chronic disease mm. in the last two years working with some of these clinics i mean i have a world-renowned clinic in miami that works with als yeah. has four documented ALS reversals, which is supposedly not even possible. Yeah. And it was really interesting talking to the owner of the clinic about how much the mindset plays in. And I've got another incredible client that's in Encinitas that works with hydrogen water therapy and Damn. bioresonance, I try that. frequency yeah. scanning. And he always talks to his clients about, you know, you don't have Crohn's. Yeah. Like you're going to be okay. Yeah, and, and having that positive mindset, in a sense, I think we're all also just here to give people hope. Yeah, you know, you know, there was a, I went to one Tony Robbins conference, and this one guy, I think his name's Joseph something. He was one of the speakers, and he was talking about how his mom had like stage four cancer. I think I think it was stage three or stage four, and the doctor was going to come in, and he was going to tell the mom, and he literally looked at the doctor, and he said, and I said, I will beat you up if you tell my mom she has cancer. <laughs> He said, I'll literally break your arm. Like he threatened him. Yeah. And so the guy literally was like, are you being serious? She's going to die in like a week. And he's all like, no, you're not going to tell her. If you tell her, I'm not joking. I will literally come to your house and hurt you. And he got in a big fight with him and he literally, and so the guy said, fine, I will not tell your mom. He told his mom that she didn't have anything too serious, that she was going to be better in no time. And he came in there every day and he talked to her every day and she got better. And he literally sat there and just positivity. They watched comedy movies. They hung out every single day. She was never once told that she had stage four cancer and she got better from stage four cancer. But, you know, if he had gone in there and told her, hey, you're going to die in a week. I'm sure that the story could have been written very differently because your mind is a great control over what's going on there. And, you know, maybe she was stressed out being at home, maybe just whatever her normal life was, what it was like, right. But your mind can control so many things. And look, I'm not saying that that's going to happen in every situation, mm -hmm. but I think that your mindset and how you feel and what you surround yourself and what you do. And even I remember listening to the book, The Secret, and it talks about the story yeah. about the same thing. This girl literally sat at home instead of like, she said they said she was gonna die within like a couple months and she just stayed at home. She watched comedies every single day for six months not any disease in her body whatsoever. Laughter is good Just medicine, laughter right? is great medicine. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean. Have you read The Biology of Belief by Bruce Lipton? I have not. This is exactly what we're talking about, right? Yeah. Bruce Lipton was a pioneer of epigenetics that we can basically change our genetics, yeah. right? Based on our environment and the biology of belief. It's exactly what you're talking about. If you yeah. believe I'm going to live, if you believe I'm going to, you know, I've just ever since I read that book and Joe Dispenza and some of the other stuff, I've just been telling, like, I'm not going to die of a heart attack. I'm not going to have a heart attack. And I just believe it, right? No way. And The Biology of Belief is such a great book. And to put it in a, a short piece of words is that our, all of our cells are basically these little conscious beings. And we have this trillion cell community of conscious beings. And the way that we think and believe and talk to ourselves and everything influences that. And if we stay positive, we can heal. And if we stay negative, you know, chronic stress, it's proven. You know, we, we, we get disease and we can die. So what you're saying is is so true. It's so true. And, you know, focusing on a positive mindset and a belief and a faith, you know, whatever it is, is tremendously healing. 
And yeah. you look, and what he talks about a lot in the book is a lot of these studies, the placebo effect, where some of these prescription drugs, um, the, the, they weren't any better than the placebo. Yeah. Especially with um, antidepressants. Yeah. Where literally people, they gave them a fake pill and said, yeah. this is your antidepressant. And just because they believed thought and believed that it was the antidepressant, yeah. they got better. 100%. You know, and it's it's fascinating. Yeah. You know, the energetic side to all this, you know, how, yeah. you know, s- the spirit of the body, right? Yeah. You know, I, the medical s- industry and science, they, they talk about mind and body, right? Yeah. And and the more I go down this You don't have one path, without the other. It's it's all one. Yeah. Right? It's it's all together. Yeah. You know, it's, it's fascinating. You, I mean, you read Joe Dispenza and he talks about how the heart is developed in the fetus three weeks before the brain and it's beating properly and it's functioning properly. So like in a sense, your heart has its own intelligence and, and, and the body has its own intelligence all over the place. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really beautiful, you know, when you, when you get passionate about this stuff and you listen to this stuff and read about this stuff, like we're talking about and, you know, to be honest, it's kind of given me a whole different outlook on myself and life, you know, like as this thing is a miracle, yeah. you know, and, and that in itself is the biology belief and helps you live a better life and heal and and feel better in a sense, you know, yeah. and treat it better, right? Yeah. It's like I, I definitely spent some time when I was younger, you know, having too much fun on the weekends and abusing my body yeah. a little bit, you know, yeah. and... and you know, now it's, it's so much more of a gift to me and, and why I treat it differently. Yeah. You know, no, 100%. And that, what you're bringing up now too, with like, even like party, I definitely did that this last weekend, partying a lot and having some drinks. I had an emotional weekend, but let's talk about, we can get into that in a second, but let's get into like when, when it came to the stem cells, specifically, you need to prep your body, um, so that the stem cells can work as optimized as possible. So I remember for you guys, you told me it was like a month of no eating, no drinking, no smoking. You basically don't want to do anything that causes inflammation. And if you start going down a rabbit hole, pretty much most things cause inflammation. So that means also like eating healthy. You can't even work out and go to the gym because you're causing yourself to be inflamed. Any processed sugars, any fast foods, um, being stressed out, all of these things cause inflammation in the body. And so it's like, you know, for me, I spent about 10 grand on the stem cells, Mm -hmm. you know, making a 10 grand investment in myself. Yeah, Yeah, it's a serious investment. Serious investment. And so you want to make sure that you're doing things as optimally as possible. And so, you know, I went to Burning Man, had a great time there. And then immediately the day I left, you know, I vape. And so like, I just immediately cut it all out and then just like stopped drinking and stopped eating badly and just was like super focused. And it was, you know, great, like also just reset. And then for six weeks after you're supposed to do the same, no smoking, no drinking and no lifting weights, nothing. Cause the reason you don't do lift weights is you cause tears when you lift, right? So you don't want the stem cells to go to new tears. You want it to go to where the current injuries are and so basically for the last like two and a half months up until last week um i was pretty healthy yeah and you, wasn't you definitely anything. want to go lighter you know uh, studying all the protocols and working with the doctors and phds that i work with um th- the best way to really think about it so it's easy for people to understand is you know our body is constantly going through cell turnover and and a lot of that is stem cells so when you hurt your elbow, your body gets pain and that signals the body and then it inflames. And then through that process, it sends signals through the blood to the places in our body that make stem cells like the bone marrow, the liver, and those stem cells go back and follow those signals to the site of the injury. And like I said earlier, by the time we're in our teens, there's a great um, chart in Neil Roden's book that shows when you're a newborn, you know, the graph is this high. And when you're a teen, it's about 80% down. And so that's why a young, like an eight-year-old tore his shoulder. He would have healed in like two weeks. And here yeah. we are, you know, at 38, 40 years old, and it doesn't heal. Yeah. The, our, the power of our stem cells are not as powerful as when we were young. Yeah. So when you put I think these... think everything starts going down significantly right around like 30 years old, right? Like even your bone density goes down about 1% every single year until you die? Yeah. A, yeah. Lot, of, a lot of this aging is... You know, David Sinclair, who's huge with anti-aging, he talks about aging being a disease, right? So, yes, the body just starts to slow down, starts to lack the ability yeah. to repair itself. So we have this natural system that's going on in our body with our own stem cells that are constantly being developed. When you put these young, naive cells from 
one of these companies from the umbilical cord, even when you put them from autologous stem cells where they get it out of your bone marrow or fat, they go in like these little chameleon nanobots and they latch onto that system. So yeah. w these doctors don't have really a con the ability to control where these cells go necessarily. Yeah. That's why they would inject it into articular or into the spine or, or any of these incredible treatments that they do. Um, so when you put these cells in your body and you're trying to treat a shoulder, you could have all these other places because there's trillions of cells and you don't know exactly what's going on in your liver right now or in yeah. your foot or in those cells, they travel. You know, there's yeah. clinical studies that show that they've tracked them with CT or contrast dye. And so they, they go where they need to go. And cell, stem cells, if you look at the science, they do four things. They repair soft tissue. They reduce inflammation, they reduce scarring, and they can modulate the immune system. So Sick. when when it comes to preparing for a treatment, right, imagine if you had two fish tanks, right, and you had this beautiful, like, just put fresh water in it, cleaned it out, like, measured the pH, like, the bacteria is right, and you had another fish tank that was, like, full of algae and just a mess, and yeah. you went and bought fish from the fish store, and you dumped the fish in both one, like which one's going to survive better? Yeah. So there's no perfect, you know, protocol. Yeah. But yeah, these doctors and scientists have developed some good ideas. You know, yeah. when you after post treatment, when you had a knee injury, yeah, it's working out a little bit. Like my my doctors told me, still do the physical therapy. Yeah. But you're right, stem cells can. Are, are shown to start to regrow the tear in the ligament. Yeah. But if you're all of a sudden work, if it, you know, was able to repair 30% and you went to the gym and tried to do a PR on bench and yeah. tore it again, you know, th that can't happen. 100%. So it, yeah. yeah, it's real important to Ease fall, follow the protocols and, and eat healthy. And, and before, since stem cells go after inflammation, before your treatment to try and get your body in the healthiest state that you can. Yeah. So when those cells are going in, they're going to the spot um, that you want them to go. No, you're absolutely and right. What's cool is you, you talk to our PhD that we work with and he says, I don't really exactly know how this works. How much of it is 30% of the, the stem cells are going into repairing the tissue. Mm. They also signal your body to bring growth factor and other stem cells. There's exosomes in there. It's yeah. still like this magic, you know yeah. what I mean? Which is nature's already put together that from the sperm and the egg, these stem cells differentiate over and over and over, embryonic and then mesenchymal over and over to to build one of us. I mean, your body's alive, right? It has its own yeah. its own like system and it's, each cell is its own little universe. So it understands what it needs or what it doesn't need. I mean, like I remember even like reading like in this book um, called Sex at Dawn, how women have this like specific um, enzyme within their like uterus or that area that if they have sex with multiple partners, it will find the most optimal cell and will always choose like the most optimal sperm um, out of like multiple um, partners. So like your body is literally constantly making the decisions, the most optimal decisions. Like a, it's for, like a built-in dating app. It is. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's funny. Swipe left, swipe right. You're oh man. Wrong. Yeah. It's, the body's insane. You know, the yeah. body's mind boggling and it's, yeah. it's, it's so miraculous and, yeah. and it's so fascinating to learn about, you know what yeah. I mean? It's, uh, yeah, it's cool. I mean, another thing that's going on in, in the industry, you know, they use this exosomes and stem cells and even PRP yeah. for hair restoration. Yeah. Another huge thing right now is the P shot. And what the what shot? The P shot. They're literally taking stem cell and injecting it into your penis Sick. for erectile dysfunction. And they also do it with women as well, too. Yeah. And, you know, because all the parts of the body, you know, age and, you know, yeah. to potentially need uh, repair. Yeah. And I mean, you know, sex is a big thing with us sex humans. Sex is a big thing, but it's so, more of a mental thing, I think, than it is a physical thing. I think all of us have the proper operating hardware. It's just whether you can get it operating the right way. At least yeah. that's my thoughts on it because I had my own issues with it in the past and it was dealing with a lot of childhood trauma, relationship issues, and just basically being super stressed out and unconfident about things and also feeling shameful about different things. But as soon as I got my operating system, working perfectly everything else works perfectly but you that's, know that's, but also that could be part of the placebo effect you get a shot in your penis maybe uh, it works perfectly 100 so percent. you know so, so much too. you're right so much of this industry is like yeah. i want to do the new cool stuff or yeah i want to have the you know latest and greatest thing yeah. but um you know the science is there and, and you're completely right there's so many aspects to it you know you're 
blood flow and circulation is huge in yeah. that, in, in that uh, mechanism in your body. And, uh, yeah. you know, boy, we love it. You know what I mean? So yeah, for sure. And then, uh, so like for optimization, would you say like, you said that the stem cells stay in your system, like, I mean like, okay, so I drank and I partied this last weekend. And, and so like, does that have an effect? Does that kill the stem cells or what does that do to it? So, yeah, that's a good point. And, and you've done a great job, you know, making sure your body's in the best shape that it can be and following the protocols. You know, we've, what I've seen through treatments is that, yeah, if someone is, you know, the type that's partying every weekend and, and they get a stem cell treatment, um, you know, they're potentially not going to have the best results. Yeah. You know, I've got some friends that, uh, still love to party a lot and they, you know, want to do, to do stem cell. And I'm like, I, I'd rather you not even do it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you, you really need to get your body in. You know, if you take really good, young, healthy cells and you put them in a body that's inflamed and has a bunch of chemicals in it and stuff, that's, you know, you can just, you could think that it wouldn't be the best outcome. Yeah. You know, like I said, there's no exact formula, perfect formula, you yeah. know, and, and the doctors know so much more about this. Um, but it definitely is uh, important in the treatments that I did and what yeah. I've seen from their protocols that, you know, you try and get your body in really good shape and, you know, avoid certain things and eat healthy, sleep well, you know, after treatments that I've experienced, I don't, I don't know if you did, I think we talked about this, but your body can, I was really tired, you know, for the next I couple of days. exhausted. Right. I was fucking and, tired. You know, it's just kind of like after you had the flu or yeah. after you did a really crazy workout, like your body regenerates yeah. in sleep yeah. and these cells are throwing your body into regeneration mode. So, you know, we tend to get fatigued yeah. afterwards. There's sometimes you can get a little bit of headache. Tony Robbins, it sounds like they dosed him up with a ton of cells when he did that treatment that he talks about in his book. Yeah. And he had a cytokine storm of a fever and all this stuff, which was expected. Yeah. That can happen to some people. Yeah, that I had a larger huge headache doses. for like two days. Yeah. I was exhausted immediately. Like I felt like my brain turned on, started pulsating, like feeling mm -hmm. the pulse in my brain. It was super interesting, but yeah, I was, I mean, you're right. You're putting your body into straight regeneration mode. It needs to rest and you need to sleep because that's the most optimal time for your body to regenerate. So, yeah. And you did a pretty, you know, a pretty hefty dose, right? You yeah. know, probably, um, you know, I did double. four shots for anybody who's, who's wondering. I did a shot in each shoulder. I did an IV, which is they did literally just, they didn't do an IV. Let's be clear about this. Don't do an IV. If you put it in the IV, most of the cells will die. You want to inject it straight into your vein, which is what they did for me. And then they did one in my upper right buttocks because I had some spine injuries from my accidents and I was hoping it would help with that. So I did four doses, which is, is that like a biggest? Well, thing? yeah, you, you did eight CCs. You know, um, we, we do in the US, you do products by volume. Um, you know, a lot of the companies are marketing and selling the product per cells. Um, overseas and, and also in the U.S., but um, you know we that product is, is in volume, and so you did eight cc's. The average cc treatment we see is about four cc's. Um, people come in to do it for you know just overall wellness. Yeah, you know uh, high performing individuals that have the the income and means to do it will do four cc's every six months. You know with, with okay. the protocol of IV therapy and endermology and the hair scan, which is okay. really really cool. That gives you a full health report based on four to six hair follicles. Got it. So and you're saying that's what's going to be my next question. Should I do it every six months, four cc's? You know, I've heard of treatments of like 50 cc's in a matter of five days for an elderly patient with dementia in her 90s. You know, our the the product that you used is is so bio is so natural. You know. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that we lose so many stem cells from when we're newborns, um, you know, it's you can do a lot of this product, right? So you yeah. could, you could, I mean, I've done about twenty-five cc's in the last year and a half in okay. my body, and you know what I've seen from my skin to my energy levels. You know, when we were in our in our twenties, I used to go surf and f half the day and go just nuts right like yeah. you never get sore you're never worn out like yeah you sleep and yeah but the way that i feel now at 40 years old is is like i was when i'm in my early 20s yeah you know and and it's funny rebecca uh is has you know all of these other doctors she knows and she's a skin expert she speaks, yeah. speaks for 
um, different magazines and stuff. And, and all her doctor friends have been like, God, your skin is so good. What do you, what has Rebecca been doing? And yeah. I, I've literally just got a couple basic facials and I surf all the time. Yeah. So I've seen a huge improvement in my skin. We've seen a lot of improvement in so many different areas yeah. with our, with our clients and in the stories that I've read online and in the treatments you hear about on Joe Rogan and Tony Robbins, like it's, it's really amazing, you know, what it could do. So people coming in and routinely getting, um, you know, treatments, you know, you look at a lot of the NFL players, you know, you look at, you know, these players that are playing at a high level in their late thirties and forties, yeah. probably because they're getting stem cells, you know, and stem right. cells aren't really recordable in the yeah. performance. I mean, they should testing, allow them to do it too, you know? Like, so, not? um, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been going on for a while, you know, it's, yeah. there's, there's a huge craze right now because of yeah. the publicity, but this is something that's been going on for a, a while now that has been effective um, in clinical studies and in, you know, Hollywood and all the areas. So, I mean, it's it's definitely, I believe, the future of medicine. 100%. You know? I, got a, I got a good question. So out of all the supplements and health modalities, what was something that you liked the most or had the best experience and results from? And then what was like the most ridiculous thing that you ever used? Um, I think that the thing that has affected me the most has just been eating healthier. Mm -hmm. And that's not a one thing. It's literally like doing the research as to what foods are good and what feels good for me. And that's been like a lifestyle shift. And it really started with like understanding that the way my mom showed love to me was by cooking us food growing up. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I would overeat all the time because like in Middle Eastern culture, it's like, oh, you're not having seconds. You're not having thirds. You're not, <laughs> you're not eating more food. And my mom would be there scooping. Like, like I literally would be like pregnant at the table yeah, yeah. and like having to really just get that under control. And so, you know, learning what to eat and then just like getting my, like understanding that I was eating as an escape mm. and so I would overeat all the time. And I, anytime I was stressed out, I would go get really unhealthy food and I would eat like three times the amount that I should and just would chomp down. And that feeling is something I would search for. And so that was probably the biggest first step in my health shift and understanding where it was coming from. And, you know, every once in a while though, I still realize that that's a pattern that when I'm really, really, really stressed, I'll go and do it again. And so- Comfort food. Comfort food, yeah. Right. So eliminating a lot of comfort food and unhealthy food. And, you know, like, you know, now instead of maybe going to like McDonald's or Del Taco or something, I'll go to like urban plates, right? And I'll still maybe order a burger and maybe fries and one other thing I shouldn't, but at least it's like a healthier choice and I'm not going straight to the worst of the worst. And so it's like, but it's like taking a little build up to get to that point. And so for me, it's food has been probably the most optimal thing that's improved my health across the board. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then as for the worst thing, I don't or know. the most ridiculous thing. I don't know, man. I tried that jaws or size thing, you know, like that like supposed to like <laughs> make your, you know, that chewing on that giant rubber thing. <laughs> yeah. I, that thing is so goddamn large. I just felt like I was choking on it. <laughs> and I'm like trying That's to like hilarious. make my face tighter and like do that. So I don't know. Gets, that one didn't gets, really work. Gets, yeah, it gives snatched, you the jaw line right? and all that. Yeah. I think I'm lucky that I talk so goddamn much. So <laughs> I don't need that thing because I'm just constantly like, psh, 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 yeah, like all sure. day long. So I luckily have the good jaw line. But um, that would probably be the one thing that I wasn't so Talking sure about, but chewing. I'm sure it works. Yeah. 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 But those, those would probably be the two biggest things. What about for you? Um, <laughs> you know, the, the food, <laughs> the, the food thing was, was, is totally relevant. You know, I've, I've been overweight multiple times in my life, lost a bunch of weight, you know, I mean, back partying a lot didn't really help with that. And it's been a crazy journey of, you know, mind, body, and spirit to, yeah. you know, be in a place that we don't, I don't need to go after excess. Right. Um, but, uh, one of the funniest one was there was a deer antler velvet, like the deers when they go into the rut or at some point they get this velvet on their antlers and it was like really, really good to promote like growth hormone and for working out and everything. Okay. And so that was probably like, that's one funny. of the most ridiculous ones ever that yeah. uh, that I remember taking over the years, you know. Yeah. But um, 
Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's so much out there. Yeah. You know I mean, if I mean? you believed it worked, maybe it would work too. That's also real also. Yeah. I haven't thought about that in yeah. forever, you know, but yeah. it's, it's, it's interesting. You yeah. know, it had some compounds in it that was, yeah. you know, really healthy for the body or something. And yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, I know a big one too was like, I was going, I mean, we've talked about the partying thing, but I was going out and partying like every weekend for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And the thing about when you're partying is like, just getting back in a rhythm where you're working out, eating healthy and being normal again, it takes like four or five days just to, for you to get back on that schedule. So if you're partying every weekend, you're never really ever in a rhythm. And so that just like, like I usually still party like once or twice a month. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I love going out, but I'm not doing it every weekend. And even like learning how to go out without needing to get drunk, right. And needing to party. And so just being able to go out and have fun with friends sober has been like a huge thing that I've been able to teach myself. And so, um, with a lot of this stuff, I think that part of that journey is just finding balance. And this is one of my coaches talks about that. That's just going to be perpetually my destiny is just finding balance in all aspects of my life. Yeah, you and the other 9 billion yeah, people nine on the people, planet, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, you know but you mean? know, everybody's balance is different, right? I like, I'm pretty extreme. That's just how that I like things. I like being extreme. I like having yeah, max fun, max I'm realization. Right there with yeah. You. yeah. So it's just finding that balance between the two. And I'm happy with the balance that I have now. And so it's just taken a while to get here, which is, it's been really helpful. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think you're doing a great job and, and it's like we could do a whole nother podcast on the, you know, inner healing and the inner work, you know, like I, you know, with, with the eating stuff and so many other challenges with, yeah, I mean, I definitely used to work hard, play hard and party too much. And, you know, now I'm, I'm sober and I don't, don't do that. I don't drink anymore. And it's, it's, uh, learning how to, how to party sober has been a, a really, a really cool thing and how life can be just as good. You know, I'm not holier than thou, like I have nothing wrong with yeah. party and I still go out with my friends and love the social aspect and everything, but you're right. It's so easier to stay consistent and it is healthier to, you know, not do it, not party, but just the whole really deep inner healing work. And I mm -hmm. think that's something that because I have that experience of going through a journey and a dark night of the soul, like you have that we've talked about in depth, when I start to come in contact with some of these people with these chronic conditions and stuff, it's almost like I can see and feel that, you know, yeah. not that I can see into everybody's soul, but yeah, you know, but we all can. Right. You know, and there's this whole other aspect of learning how to handle life and, and stress, you know, as much as we have such a beautiful life these days with so many comforts and all this incredible technology and podcasts and all that stuff, it still has its challenges. Yeah. You know, and and I think we're so trained from social media and access to information and, you know, texting and things that make us kind of move on to the next thing and not sit in our feelings and everything. And you're right, you know, eating over your feelings, engaging in all different other types of, you know, activities obsessively is, is a huge thing to look at and yeah. a huge thing to heal that can really help your whole entire well-being. Yeah, but also it doesn't even have anything to do with drinking or partying or doing drugs, no. right? It's not that. It's everything you do in your life, right? So I started talking fast because I got excited. Um, but... You know, it's it's going to the gym, you know, have, listening to a podcast can even be an escape. Your work can be an escape, right? So it's like, why are you doing something? Are you doing it to enhance your life or doing it to escape your life? And so paying attention to all of those things on everything that you do in your life is extremely important. And, and as you kind of get things under control, it starts to have a trickle down effect on everything else. And then you start realizing that even your work might be an escape from your stress or whatever's going on in your life. And going to the gym is another reason that might be an escape or stress from your life. And even reading a book, which is supposed to be for pleasure, can be an escape if you don't want to sit there with your thoughts and process through things. So everything in life can be a drug or it can be, you know, it can be some sort of escape and you kind of have to pay attention and measure those things as you're going through your day. A hundred percent. You know, it's, you know, a lot of our friends that we know each other through, you know, like when I saw you at Sophia's birthday, you know, in the sound healing, yoga, meditation communities, you know, I started a meditation group at my house uh, over a year ago um, because I was led to some meditation groups through another friend of mine um, that passed away. Uh, it was a really spiritual guy that changed my life and, you know, really doing the deep work and 
and working on our energy, you know, and, and finding a power greater than yourself yeah. and really focusing on what can I bring to life instead of what I can take from life. Yeah. And I, you know, so many people that I know, especially in the recovery community, you know, meditation is not the easiest for people this day and age because everything's going so fast. Yeah. And it's become really popular because, and it's been around thousands of years because it works. And so creating this group has been such a beautiful experience uh, every Wednesday night in my home for people to come. You know, we do some meditation, breath work, and I do some sound healing. And it's it's just been so beautiful because you provide a space for people to come and to sit with themselves. But they're not alone. We're sitting with each other and we can process grief and sadness and anxiety and, you know, watching, you know, grown men cry that never cried before. And, you know, that is true healing. You know, yeah. some of my friends and people in the group practice Reiki and, you know, Jore and some energy healing modalities that even myself three, four years ago would have been like, oh, I don't know about that. You what know, are you doing, you weirdo? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, my journey's kind of been a journey of experience. Yeah. You know, and I've seen some pretty crazy yeah. stuff, you know. And yeah, I mean, well, everything's energetics and vibrations, right? I was even yeah. uh, showing a friend some YouTube videos where they were showing how all water, and we're pretty much made up of water, right? Everything is made up of water in the sense, of not everything, but most things. And like it holds, it holds that vibration. It holds memory within it. And so when you're near someone, the way you act, the way you treat them, and, and the vibration that you're putting out literally has an effect on their water. And so you have to remember that even though Reiki and maybe some of these other modalities, which are energetic modalities, um, you might not believe they're real, but they can be proven on a scientific level that they are 100% real. So um, for lack of a better term, when some people call it woo woo, that's really just energetics and understanding the basics of the universe. You can understand that quantum physics, energetics, Reiki, all these things are able to be proven scientifically. Oh, you're totally correct. The, yeah. I think it's the Massimuro moto water experiments yeah. where they you know are playing you know certain types of music in the cellular structure of the water and yeah. i mean it's incredible and yeah we're you know mostly made up of water and our cells on a molecular level are water and water is very influenced by energy and frequency and energy is neither created nor destroyed and i think it's like the sixth sense you know we can feel energy some people have more ability to feel that or not feel that. Mm. And I think even on this journey of, of healing per se, developing a new intuition, developing a new sense, a new, like living in the present, mm. you know what I mean? To really become aware, yep. you know, like I think a, the true spiritual awakening, which is very involved in healing in my opinion, is, is becoming aware of energy, our intellectual, our emotional energy. You know, meditation means to find oneself. And so- No, ain't you that know, the greatest journey? It's the greatest journey. And, and it's like, I remember five years ago when I first really started going down this journey, it was like to sit with myself. I was like, no way. And it's also the hardest journey. Yeah, it's the hardest journey. I, you know, I meditate all the time and I still wake up and I'm like, okay, I'm going to meditate. And it's like, oh, no, I got to make that call. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, got to get to life. Yeah. And uh, the more I have a tip for that because I, I do the same thing. I have too many things going on. So yeah. I just started keeping a meditation notepad. Yeah. That anything I have to do, if it's something that, isn't actually imperative. I just write it down, then continue with the meditation. So if it's like a task or something like that, just get it out of your head. It's not a big deal. You can break your meditation to get it out of your head. Then you can focus on your meditation because it's just floating around and they're taking up space. That's that's a that's a great idea. Yeah, and you know, sometimes there's... my whole meditation is just getting shit out of my head. I like that. I like <laughs> so... that because yeah, you're right. The mind does crazy things. The mind like does does its own thing, you yeah. know, and and comes up with thoughts. I, we're kind of powerless over that sometimes. You know what I mean? It's like. It's like our mind has its own schizophrenic on the corner, you know, yeah. spouting out gibberish, you know. Well, I think just but, the mind, it's not so much that we don't have a control over it. I think that the mind categorizes things by importance. Mm -hmm. So as you remove the things that are most apparent and most intense in front of your eyes, then it will start going to the deeper layers. And there will always be deeper layers to go until you become Buddha, right? And you're just sitting in enlightenment. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think that... I don't think that 99% of the planet will ever take the time to become Buddha. So most of us will just be stuck with the things that need to be done. And those things are not just 
work things, but there are emotional things that need to be done and they can be, oh yeah, I need to call this friend because I just thought about them. Oh yeah, I need to call this person because I forgot that I hurt them last week and need to apologize. Oh yeah, I need to do this prayer because that was something I've been wanting to do for a long time and I haven't made time for myself. So it's always, in my opinion, going to be a list of things that are going to come through to do and it's just how you approach it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's it, human nature is is so strong in all of us, right? So, yeah. you know, so many people, I mean, I think part of it's a blessing to curse to be on this path that we're on, wanting more out of life, having the deep conversations that blessing. we're getting into right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it it's definitely like can feel like some a days curse. Uh, it's so powerful. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, it's so incredible. And then some days it's just like, oh, this is so much, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's just part of the journey, right? You know, yeah. the, the ebbs and flows, the high tide and the low tide. And, and uh, who, so who are some of your favorite speakers that you listen to over the years? I know we've talked about that before and you brought up Tony Robbins yeah. earlier and we're kind of talking spiritual development and growth and yeah, um, some favorite books you've had. I mean, I've been in the Fit for Service program over the last year with Aubrey Marcus. And so that's been pretty life-changing and he's amazing on all levels. And I'm actually going to be doing a podcast with four members of it next uh, on the 30th. So they're flying in from different states to come do this. We're going to do like a four or five hour podcast. Wow. We're just going to go over what the year has been like going through that experience, talk about our journeys and then kind of share that. So he's been very influential. And then um, I really do like Tony Robbins a lot. Um, yeah. He's been he's been awesome. Paul Trek I've been listening to quite yeah, a bit lately. Too. He's really good. I really do like Joe Rogan too. Yeah. Know some people are very strongly opinionated about whether they like him or not. You know, what I will say about each one of these individuals is that I don't believe everything they say. So let's be clear about that, okay? <laughs> I respect them though, Absolutely. because they only speak about what they know. Mm -hmm. And that's why I really like these speakers is they tr tend to trend towards only speaking about things that they're knowledgeable about. And I also can respect them because they're very transparent about what their beliefs are. Yeah. And I think we live in a world that most people don't have beliefs about anything and don't know what their beliefs are. And so I really like these mm -hmm. people because they're very strong about their beliefs and they're very much like in alignment not just with what they say, but with the way that they think and the way that they feel, and then it aligns with what they do. And so I like people that are basically from the top to bottom in alignment with what they're trying to express in the world. You know, Joe Rogan is a badass. He does his cold plunge every day. He works out. He trains. He is a comedian. He does all the things, you know, and Aubrey, he does all the spiritual stuff. He helps guide people. He teaches people. He does the medicine journeys. Paul Cech leads these ceremonies and he leads these... Um, huge conferences where he's helping heal people on a regular basis. He does a bunch. Like they're not just saying things. They're embodying it in every aspect of their lives. Yes. And so as yeah. you embody it in every aspect of your life, those are people that I have a lot of respect for. And um, I think that it's necessary to have all three, the way we think, the way we feel, and, and what we actually do. And that's just called being an intention, yeah. you need to be in constant tension. And I have to thank Mateus De Stefano, one of the speakers that I've learned about recently, who gave me that missing piece in my life, which is like you have to have the connection between all three of them yeah, for you to be huge. living that life and um, or just to be living a divine life, for lack of a better term. And so, yeah, I've been I've been learning about more and more people. And I mean, I could give you a huge list of individuals, um, but those, I guess, would be the ones that probably have have influenced me just apparently on the face of things the most. And yeah, mm -hmm. Tony Robbins is amazing. I know some people have opinions about Tony Robbins. And the reason I'm bringing this up is just Everybody once again, I'm not saying opinions. everyone's perfect. You can probably find a billion flaws about me, even if you like who I am. Like I've done a lot of fucked up shit in my life and <laughs> I might not be able to resonate with sometimes, but I think at the core, a lot of things that I say and I talk about and I believe in are good things. And so everybody's made mistakes. No one is perfect. If you were perfect, you'd be the only damn one. And yeah. even that quote is from Peter Crone. I really like Peter, Peter Crone. Crone. If you haven't looked him up, go listen to Peter Crone. And um, like each one of these people have affected me in a different way and take what feels right from each one of those individuals. And that is what's right. And that's all you have to take. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. And, and you know, what I hear is practicing what you preach, right? Yeah. You know, and it's hard to really talk about something if you don't have experience in it, but a lot of people like to do that these days and with our access to information and our ability to, you know, get on, get on the, the show, the stage, to talk on online and everything, you know, yeah. it's, there's a lot of, of bullshit out there. Right. And so I think yeah, that's but you can a, feel what's bullshit totally. And I think that's a good philosophy of, you know, feeling out who they are and, and really paying attention to what they do. And, and, uh, yeah, those are some amazing people too, for sure. Tony Robbins completely changed my life. Yeah. You know, I still listen to him all the time and, yeah. you know, his, 
desire to really help people in what he's done in his life. And, yeah. and there's just so many, so many good, good speakers yeah. out there. And that's the beauty of this day and age with these podcasts. And I mean, God, YouTube, my own healing journey, the amount of success I've had just because I have the access to YouTube to be able mm. to listen to these speakers yeah. for free. I mean, think of how incredible today is, right? Yeah. Thirty years ago, you had to, would have had to go buy the tapes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Unlimited information at your fingertips. It's unlimited information. At all moments. It's so it's so incredible with yeah. all this health stuff and all the you know mental health stuff and yeah. the spiritual development stuff. You know, I mean, it's uh, it's just it's it's incredible. You yeah. know, and and there's some like incredible books out there. Um, you know, Tony Robbins books. Um, his new book, Life Force, was really yeah. amazing with health. Yeah. Um, you know, The Power of Now is a really good book. Yeah, um, I've read that one. Untethered that one's Soul. really good. That Power of Now helped me deal with a lot of depression. Edgar Tolle is an interesting character. He's, he is. He's, the way he talks is a bit corny, in my opinion. Yeah, he's hard that's to listen all, to Yeah, but, but that's his personality, and that's, yeah. his, that's his story, and that's him reading the book, I believe, even in the audiobook, I listened to it. I listened to it while I was traveling the world, and it just taught me to come to the present moment because all your problems... Um, all your depression relies in the past and all your anxiety relies in the future. And most people live in either or. They're never living actually here in the moment when you really get down to it, there's really nothing wrong with this moment unless you're literally like in peril and yeah. someone's holding a knife to your throat, you're probably 100% okay and everything's perfect. So right. Yeah. We're always in the future or the past. Yeah. And it's not real. No, it doesn't exist. 99 problems and 98 of them are non-existent imaginary scenarios that I've created in my mind. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. it's like even thinking about the future when we're there, it's going to be the present, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the thing is you're never going to be the future you. You're only the you you are right now. And so yeah. we're worried about something that's never going to exist. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, there's a quote that I love. I can't remember who said it, but it's the past is history. The future is a mystery, but now is a gift. And that's why they call it the present. Yeah. You know, One more time. The past is history. Yeah. The future is a mystery, but now is a gift. And that's why they call it the present. Cool. And and it goes back to what you're saying. You're right. Life is here right now. Yeah. And that's been such a huge lesson for me, especially with the mental health stuff, being yeah. a person that struggled with anxiety before yeah. and maybe some depression. And, and it's just, yeah, right here and like right now. You know, I teach breath work and do sound healing workshops. And one thing I love to show people is to just to take a breath and on the inhale, say, I am. And on the exhale, here now, internally. I am here now. Right? And it's that's one of the biggest health yeah. tools that we really haven't talked about a lot is the breath. Yeah. You know, and how there's a book, Breathe, by James yeah. Nestor. I encourage everyone Amazing. to read it. You've read it, right? We Amazing. talked about it when we had sushi that day. Changed my and life. And it's just, I, yeah, I tape my mouth every night and have yeah. done all the different things in the in yeah. the book. But it's so insane yeah. how much we don't focus on the breath. Yeah. No, I mean, you could not eat for days. You could not yeah. drink water for days. But you can't really not breathe for more than maybe four or five minutes. Yeah, no, you're absolutely you're done. Right. I mean, dude, the, throughout this whole podcast today, because like we talked about, I lost one of my best friends this last weekend. I've like, like that's a huge practice during leading a podcast and like having a podcast is like you have to. I can't go anywhere. I need to be fully present for this whole conversation. Yeah. Otherwise, everyone's just watching this and be like, this idiot isn't even here. He's not paying attention to what this guy across from him is saying. Yeah. So like, I like consciously have to like take deep breaths and like literally calm down and like not go wherever I'm trying to go. And just stay in this conversation and then also just like trying to pay attention to what you're saying, not allowing my emotions to distract me and take me where they're trying to go and coming back to the present breath and I'm here right now is exactly what I'm saying to myself without saying those words. Like I yeah. need to stay right here right now. Come back to the moment. Well, yeah. I mean, let's honor your friend, man. Tell me about your friend right now. Uh my friend's name was Alex Z. Alex Z was a legend. And the reason I'm not saying his whole last his last name is because it's a Russian last name and it's got like 17 syllables instead of just any vowels in it. So I'm not <laughs> even sure what is the proper way to pronounce it. Uh, the Russians um, are nuts. Yeah, the Russians are right. a bit nuts. He was fully nuts. And that's what I loved about oh, him. Yeah, I've got to yeah, love that, right? Yeah, dude. I mean, he was just fucking full of life. Amazing dude. So much fun. You know, he's one of my top five favorite friends. 
He was so entertaining. He was always being followed around by a bunch of beautiful women that loved to be around him and they always the that, cool. Right? Yeah, and I mean, he was always had the coolest guy friends. Like he was like always the coolest friend. He's like, doesn't have a creepy bone in his body. He's just charming, sweet guy, always trying to make everybody happy, always trying to support them, love them, make the party. Like he loved making the party just like better. And like even in the last couple of years, he started getting into fire spinning. I think I was there one of the first times, like trying to help him learn because I spin some fire too. And then he started creating like these, like he built a stage at his house where people could come perform fire all the time. And he would have fire parties at his house once a month and just host people over there and not charge them anything. And would literally just have a place where people could come and be themselves, fully express themselves. He would always like have photographers, people videotaping, taking things. He was always the leader in the group, taking performers to different places. And wow. he just was a character, dude. He brought... The 747 um, aircraft carrier, like the huge plane to Burning Man, he was the project manager on that. He's been the lead at Playa Alchemist, which is a giant pyramid for the last couple of years there. And he's just he's just a fucking legend. Yeah, that's amazing. And he, he will always be him? a legend. I met him at Lightning in a Bottle, and that's we a, were a, just like, good event. he was his RV was right next door to my RV. And someone's like, you got to just come in here and meet Alex. And we just started like hitting it off immediately because him and I um, are just natural leaders when it comes to groups. And it's funny because I'm not usually one feeling comfortable saying follow that guy. And throughout the weekend, I'd be like, nope, follow him. And then they'd be like, <laughs> nope, follow him. And we and we both love yeah. having megaphones. So we're both loud and obnoxious in that way too. <laughs> and so we just like would always have a blast and just always had great ideas and just always looking to improve the situation for everyone. And he just had so many awesome friends and I had so many awesome some friends we were just introducing each other to all of our friends and you know we just had one of the best weekends of my life that weekend and I just remember just laughing and crying and just having so much fun with him and man just like so many of my core memories throughout my life that I've like hung out with him just you know it's like you know you ever have those friends and no matter when you hang out with them it's not a mediocre time it's not a basic yeah. time it's always yeah. some epic ridiculous thing that you're going to remember for the rest of your life and you're probably going to get a little more drunk than you should but you're going to have a way like you're just going to go for it and you know no good story ever started with i went to bed around 10 p.m like no, he's like no. he's like one of those people that we would always go on an epic adventure and he will forever hold a place in my heart and I will forever tell stories about him and make fun of him. And it's funny, he was like so shredded from like head to toe. And he always used to joke, he'd be like, yeah, I take two scoops for breakfast in the morning and that's it, that's pre-workout. And that's yeah. literally what his breakfast would be. And he's just like always talking a billion miles per hour and bopping around like this and just being going really fast. And like, we just resonated because we, we just, just there's just so many things on a soul level that we got along with and we, we agreed on. And whenever we'd introduce each other to friends, it'd be like, this is one of the top five greatest people on the planet. Like, I don't even know how you get a better compliment than that. Like yeah, it really, it. that's like, that's as high as it gets. Like, and so that's how he would introduce me and go into this long spiel about all my awesome shit that I do. And I would do the same about him. And it was just like, you know, one of those people that, that will always have a place in your heart and fuck him for yeah. going out the way that he did. But you know, it's just shit happens. You never know when it's going to happen. And, you know, it wasn't lung cancer. It was he fell asleep while driving. And so it's like, you know, if anything, he should have been taping a super hot chick, spinning fire and like lit himself on fire would have been way more reasonable <laughs> and like uh, acceptable way for him to go out. But I, know, I, checked, I checked out his Instagram when I saw Kim yeah. you know, post about his passing. And uh, yeah, it looks like he definitely lived life. Dude, yeah, I mean, his, his hashtag was, or his Instagram was named Be A Badass. That is the exact description so of what Alex is like. It's Be so A Badass. So if you had to sum him up in one word, what word would you use? Badass. That would be the word that I would use. Yeah. That's yeah. the jam right Dude, there. he's a jam. And just like, man. That's that's amazing. You know, it's like uh, my friend Tressa that uh, yeah, she was, it's, it's crazy. It's like you described, you know, her, you know, he's... Yeah, she would be the female version of that, you know, just yeah. the life of the party. Um, yeah, she was a lovely that, lady. Lo someone that loved unconditionally, you know, yeah. someone that, yeah, every time I hung out with her was like the most fun, obnoxious, just incredible time, yeah. you know. She was a deep person too and really just genuinely cared about the well-being of others and that they were having fun too, Yeah, you know, and, and really wanting to – change the world and help people yeah you know she had a she had a dream to create a health company and a, a, actually a company called party with a purpose and uh rebecca and her were working on a a project together of health and wellness and it's yeah. like 
it's like we're really continuing um, her vision. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think when you lose someone, because, you know, I, I can relate to what you're going through right now, because the day that my friend called me and told me that she had passed away because she was doing really well, she actually beat the cancer, but it's a long story on how how it ended up going down. But like, I mean, I like dropped to the floor. I've never felt so hurt mm. at one time. And, but it's like the best thing we could do is honor who they were. Right. And adapt mm. the principles and values like you're talking about, right. And how they, how they lived, love people unconditionally, like support people, be them, for, be there for them, be a badass, Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, cheers to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cheers to them. Wherever this goes out are. to your, your boy, Alex. Because I'll stress that dude. You know, we yeah. gotta we gotta honor him today. It yeah. feels totally appropriate. Yeah, dude. They were they were great souls and they affected a lot of people. And yeah, I know they weren't here for a long time, but they were here for a good time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, and then, oh God, sometimes it's crazy how that works, right? Like, you know, like those are you know, those are two people that yeah, I never worried if they were not living life to the fullest, that they weren't happy, that they weren't having a good time, you know. It's just they were always they were always be an example of what it meant to be like carefree and just relax and just enjoy your moment and enjoy everyone around them and I don't know one person that's ever said anything bad you know about about them and so just kind of these are the legends that will be with us forever yeah and you know it's like that's that's our mission right you know what I mean yeah. and we'll continue it on and make a promise to just continue to live life to the fullest and yeah. help people and you know just I don't know about you but I'm living my dreams right now, you know yeah. what I mean, in my life. And so much of it is not, I don't even feel like is my own doing, you know, it's like the universe just dropping things in my life. And there's a book that I read yeah. by Michael Stinger called The Surrender Experiment. Yeah. And, you know, he was talking about meditation, the voices inside his head, he was going and meditating. And then one day he figured out, wait, I'm just running from everything. Like, yeah. What if I just said yes to everything, the rainy day, the job I don't want to take the business opportunity that doesn't come yeah, up and fuck it. it's the craziest story yeah. Yeah. and literally I read that book about three years ago two and a half years ago and I just started to do that yeah and all of a sudden here I am on a podcast yeah with Joe yeah talking about stem cells you're welcome yeah it's <laughs> it's insane it's insane right it's absolutely insane so you know, the universe yeah. is on our side. and um, Yeah, dude, I mean, you know. every opportunity is a gift from God. It was presented to you, not by accident. So, I mean, also having the presence and, and the ability to say no is something that you have to feel into, too. But yeah. I think more often than not, it's not an opportunity to say no. It's being presented to you as an opportunity for growth. Other human beings are brought into your life to show you where you're not free. And so you have mm -hmm. to see every opportunity that feels difficult is just an opportunity for you to grow and become more free. Absolutely, man. The, the school of life. The school of life. Bring your paper, your pencil, and your rule, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, All the above. Yeah, it's an amazing journey, man. Yeah, cool. So, I think it feels good to end there. Yeah. No, yeah. it feels great, dude. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much for having me yeah. on. And uh, Time out before we end. Um, how can people get a hold of you? What website? What's your phone number? Um just give them, they're going to look into that camera and okay. you're going to give them all the details of how to contact you, how to spell your name, your cell phone number, or whatever you're comfortable giving, your email, your website, all the above. And so you guys can reach out to Matt. Cool. Uh, you can, on Instagram, uh, MC San Diego. Uh, and then our company website is rwgwellness.com. Uh, rwgwellness spelled out.com. And uh, if you Everything I've talked about today, you know, if you have any complaints <laughs> or any me. questions about <laughs> any of these modalities that I've I've talked about, you know, feel free to reach out. I'm always uh, available to help anybody on their journey, and uh, it's my life's mission. So definitely hit me up on one of those two platforms, and uh, we'd be happy to connect. So, Do you want to give them your cell phone number if they want to reach out for stem cells? Uh, yeah. Yeah, my cell phone number is 858 seven five zero five two zero three eight five eight seven five zero five two zero three give me a call personally and i'll guide you in the right direction cool yeah we'll also have all that in the notes so thanks everybody for chiming in today this was an awesome episode um emotional episode and just i hope there's a lot of topics here that are going to resonate with you and we appreciate you spending your time with us because we appreciated spending it with you ciao cool <laughs>